in most relationships, you can break up or you can have a thousand fights. If you have a thousand fights, then you don't have to fight. You make peace that way. You're different than your partner, so there's things to work out there. And you might think about that as a compromise, but it's not. It's that you're different than your partner and you have to find a game that you both want to play. That's not a compromise. That's a solution. It's like you bring your skills to the table and I bring my skills to the table and then we figure out some game we can play where we're both optimally utilized and it's a better game than we could play alone. That's not a compromise. But getting to that's very difficult and people bring all sorts of baggage to a relationship and you have to, it's just like disciplining children, really. It's the same thing. You note your children are annoying you. I'm being annoyed by my child. Okay, so what questions do you ask? Am I a tyrannical son of a bitch who's touchy? Well, that's why you need your wife because you can go ask her. My kids are annoying me. Am I a tyrannical son of a bitch who's touchy? And she said, yeah, you probably need something to eat or you're a bit of a prick that way. And you got to listen because maybe it's you. Or maybe she says, yeah, that goddamn child's been getting on my case too. And then you ask each other, are we mutually tyrants? It's like, no, that kid's annoying. Okay, do we want him to be annoying? Well, if you love your child, then the answer to that would be no. Because if he's annoying you, he's going to annoy other people. He's going to annoy his potential friends. He's going to annoy other adults. He's going to go through the world being annoying and everyone's going to frown at him. That's not helpful. So then you could just fix it. That's going to cause some short-term upset. Maybe you have a 13-month-old child who's very extroverted and disagreeable, who like rules the roost. And every time the mother goes more than a foot away from her, she has a squawk fit because she's learned to control. Now you have to do something about this emerging monster of a 14-month-old child. And one of the things you do is every time the child is bossy, first of all, you note it and you note that you're not very fond of yourself for being tyrannized by a 14-month-old. That's a bit of a status hit, like it should be. So you have to notice, I'm annoyed by this child. Well, then I should do something about it. <coughs> well, it's going to cause short-term emotional distress. The same thing occurs when you're dealing with your partner. It's like, you're annoying me. Okay. Now, maybe that's me. So I should bloody well, maybe we should have a talk about that. You're annoying me. Convince me that it's me. And I should listen because maybe it's me. And if I'm annoyed about you, and I shouldn't be, I should fix that. But maybe it's you. So let's find out exactly what's going on. There's just constant thrust and counter thrust in a discussion like that. And usually, you know, the conversation will circle around whatever the hell the issue is till you get to the bottom of it. And God only knows where that is. But then maybe you can sort it out, you know? And if you sort out enough of those things, you live in peace. And that's something worth attaining. There's nothing too small to fight about. If someone bugs you, you should note that and you shouldn't do anything about it. If they bug you twice the same way, then you think, oh, okay, that's twice. But probably still you shouldn't do anything about it. But if they bug you three times, then you can say, here's what you just did. And you did exactly the same thing in this other situation. And you did exactly the same thing in this other situation. So don't be telling me you didn't do it because you did it three times and I watched. Okay, now they come up with reasons they did it. And maybe some of them have to do with what a stupid son of a bitch you are. And you should listen because maybe they're right. But that's at least the beginnings of the process by which you unravel the problems. We want to get to a place where our whole life is like the best moments of the best dates we ever had. That's a good goal. That's attainable. You got to work, man. There's a this scene in, the, in Genesis. God throws Adam and Eve out of paradise because of their sin of pride. They each have their own particular version of that sin, but they get thrown out of paradise anyways. And God puts cherubs at the gates of paradise. And the cherubs, they're kind of these monstrous angels, terrifying figures, and they hold swords that are on fire that turn every which way and burn. You might say, well, what does that mean? And it means that, well, a sword is something that cuts away and fire is something that burns. And a sword that burns, burns and cuts away. And a sword that burns and turns every which way is a burning sword from which nothing can escape. You want to walk into paradise. Everything that isn't worthy in you has to be burned and cut away. Well, that's what that conflict is in a relationship. That's not suitable for paradise. It has to be cast into the outer darkness. It has to be cut away and destroyed. And everything that isn't worthy has to go. If you love someone, you see their hidden soul. You get a glimpse of the light that they could reveal to the world if they revealed it. That's what you see. To act in love is to encourage that to come forward and to discourage anything that gets in its way. That 
that's why I love the Michelangelo effect. Michelangelo sees this huge, massive, unhewn block right. of marble. Oh, I see. And inside of that, he is able to see David. Mm -hmm. And over time, slowly, he will chip away mm -hmm. and he will chip away and he will chip away. Mm -hmm. So you see something that isn't there that's inside of the thing, which is rough and unhewn and uncivilized right. and undomesticated mm -hmm. and rambunctious and sometimes terrible. And you were able to, from that, Yeah, yeah, that, that's actually part of the Tao Te Ching, the uncarved block. So a child is an uncarved block in the Taoist view. And you remove everything that's excess until what's perfect remains. 